It was the summer of 1889, only a few months after the land run made history in Oklahoma Territory. A petite yet bold woman named Jenny Forster marched into Brown's Lumber Company on a mission. She and her husband, George, operated a grocery store on Broad Street. Over the past few months, eager entrepreneurs had established all sorts of businesses in the new town. There were banks, blacksmiths, and drugstores. There was even a livery stable where people could keep their horse, cleverly named Hotel de Haas. One vital establishment was absent, though. Jenny Forster aimed to correct that by ordering enough lumber on credit to build a much-needed schoolhouse for the town's children. Mrs. Forrester was the president of the Ladies' Aid Society and the School Aid Society, which was comprised of 15 women. With the lumber available, community volunteers started work on building not only the first school in Edmond, but the first public school in Oklahoma Territory. Two years later, Edmond would also be the first in Oklahoma Territory to offer classes of higher education. As town volunteers built the one-room schoolhouse, the women of School Aid Society set to work paying back the lumber bill. They badgered their husbands and other town merchants. Mrs. Forrester would later joke that Edmund businessmen felt like running out the back door when they saw her entering the front door. Women would make and sell rugs. They even held town fundraisers like an ice cream social that raised $25. Money earned would go to the construction of the schoolhouse and to pay a young teacher, Miss Ollie McCormick. Her salary was $30 a month for the eight-month school session. The schoolhouse certainly earned its keep in the community by hosting both local town meetings, church services, as well as Saturday night dances. On September 16th, the school opened with only 19 pupils, but by the end of the term, Miss McCormick had 37 students, ranging from first to eighth grade. During the second year, a bell was added, along with two vestibules at each entry. As more and more students enrolled in the school, the school board built a substantial addition to the rear of the building. Two teachers were now necessary, one to teach the primary students, while another taught the upper classes. In 1900, Eastside School opened two blocks away. Edmund children now had a two-story stone building from which to learn. The two-room schoolhouse was then sold and converted into a home. Today, Edmund Public Schools have more than 24,000 students. The school district consists of 17 elementary schools, six middle schools, and three high schools, with a fourth on the way. As for the schoolhouse, it was lived in by several townspeople over the years. In 1927, P.R. Sanders bought it for his family. His son Woodrow would later use part of the building as his home and part of it as a camera shop. When the camera store closed in 1975, the building lay dormant for 25 years. Its origin as Edmund's first schoolhouse had been long forgotten. But there were some curious residents who had a suspicion about the camera shop's historical beginnings. Lucille Warwick was a member of Edmund's Historic Preservation Trust and had lived in Edmund since 1961. With determination like the steadfast Jenny Forster and the ladies of the School Aid Society, Lucille Warwick combed through property records and aged newspaper clippings for evidence that Edmund's first school still stood after 100 years. With her proof, the Historic Preservation Trust convinced the city of Edmond and other donors to raise funds for the purchase and restoration of the schoolhouse. In August 2002, as workers removed layers of wallpaper and paint, they discovered five painted blackboards on the interior walls. The origin of the building was no longer a mystery. In the fall of 2008, 
119 years after first opening its doors to children in Edmond, a class of students from Russell Doherty Elementary School walked into the renovated Territorial School and began a day of instruction, just like students in 1889. The renovated Territorial Schoolhouse is open to the public. Visit edmondhistoricpreservationtrust.com to learn its hours of operation. In December 1890, while Miss Ollie McCormick was teaching her second year in the one-room schoolhouse, the Oklahoma Territorial Legislature met to decide the establishment of several institutions throughout Oklahoma Territory. Residents were eager to ensure that one of those institutions be located in Edmond. Dr. J. W. Howard presented Council Bill 106, which called for the Territorial Normal School of Oklahoma to be granted to the town of Edmond. A normal school was an institution dedicated to training public teachers. After heated debates, the legislature passed the bill provided that certain conditions be met. Oklahoma County had to donate $5,000 in bonds. 40 acres of land within a mile of Edmond proper had to be donated for the school and to help raise funds. Anton Klassen, a lawyer from Illinois who had participated in the land run, donated 40 acres for the campus on the east edge of town. 10 acres were reserved for the college itself. The other 30 acres were divided into lots and sold to raise money for the new school. The first teacher and principal of the normal school was Richard Thatcher, a man with an interesting past. At the age of 15, he joined the Union Army and was a drummer boy during the Civil War. He was captured by Confederates and placed in Andersonville Prison where he contracted tuberculosis and nearly died. Managing to escape, he rejoined his unit and served until his discharge. After the war, Richard earned degrees in English and science and a doctorate in divinity. He served as superintendent of schools in Kansas, then worked briefly in Washington, D.C. as a clerk for the Census Bureau. He was elected principal of the Territorial Normal School in 1891 and would be an important figure at the college until his death in 1909. The Normal Building, now known as Old North, was first constructed as a three-story building with a basement. The two wings and the main clock tower were added a couple of years later. Since the building would not be ready for its first term, Mr. Thatcher arranged for classes to begin at the First Methodist Church using desks he built himself. His first class began November 9, 1891. Students were admitted free if they declared their intentions to teach school in Oklahoma Territory. Otherwise, the tuition was $7.50 per term for 22 weeks. In 1894, the wings and tower of Old North were completed. The new school building proudly stood within the growing community. The Edmund Sun said the school was the gem of Oklahoma, a magnificent structure equipped with modern improvements. To better help the teachers in their training, Thatcher started a model school with 12 children that the college students could instruct and get practical teacher experience. The first graduating class at the normal school consisted of three ladies and two men. Over the years, the Territorial Normal School of Oklahoma changed names six times, finally settling on the University of Central Oklahoma in 1991. Today, the four-year college has an enrollment of approximately 17,000 on its 210-acre campus. There are 116 undergraduate majors and 58 graduate programs offered to students. UCO was named an official U.S. Olympic and Paralympic training site and hosted the 2010 World Sitting Volleyball Championships on its campus. From its very beginning, education has always been an important benefit to Edmond. It's one of the many reasons people raise their family here and will be for years to come.